Welcome to this video. This is about um, the start of the second leg of the, I think it's called the World Cup final, right? No, the final Masters, I'm sorry. There are so many um, different Masters finals and cups, it's uh, difficult to keep track. The final Masters, Masters final, yeah, whatever. We are on the second leg, so it's round six in this um, event. First, Five rounds had been played in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, and uh, they took about one week to relocate to Bilbao now for the final five games. Um, yeah, the first leg um, had uh, seen Caruana dominating the field with a bit of luck. You need to really uh, to take that into account. He won a clearly worse to lost position against Carlsen and held a really dead position against um, Aronian, uh, which is nevertheless is some something to be proud of. You need to, um, not losing your lost positions is a very important uh, virtue. Um, and it's, uh, it's not at all easy <laughs> to keep up the resistance in lost positions and get the, the odd draw here and there. Yeah, still, it's clear that this first game is essential for the further course of the tournament as Carlsen is playing Caruana with White. Carlsen had lost this, um, yeah, this weird first game in Brazil and he badly needs to win this game to get into contention uh, to win this tournament. So let's see what happens. Carlsen playing 1e4 and Caruana surprisingly uh, going for the French. Yeah, the French has played often in this tournament. It's, uh, it's a bit surprising. Um, it's not surprising considering that the French has um, a pretty good theoretical standing at the moment, but still it's surprising to see on, on that level, to see it played so often. But Carlsen now plays 2d3, avoiding all kinds of theoretical discussions. Um, this is basically telling Caruana, okay, we play chess now from move 2 and uh, forget about any computer preparation. And I think pretty early on we get into some position which is, uh, yeah, just played by both players and not prepared. Prepared. Um, okay, d5, knight d2, um, knight f6, knight to f3. So um, normal moves. And um, in this kind of uh, formation, black has um, a multitude of um, possibilities. It can play b6, which has a pretty good reputation. Now uh, you can play the classic uh, move, classical move c5, and then uh, knight c6, bishop b7, and castles, with, which is maybe a bit risky. It, it's it's probably okay, but um, gives white chances on the king side. There are a multitude of uh, possibilities. Caruana now plays knight c6, which is also, I think, um, believed to be a good move. And um, the idea is that black wants to exchange on e4 and then play e5. Um, Carlsen now plays uh, c3. This is actually um, yeah, kind of a waiting move, anticipating what I just uh, mentioned. If white would play g3 just to, to put it on the board, which is often the idea if you're chatting the bishop, then black can get into this kind of position where you rather want your bishop to be on... No, not there. <laughs> uh, okay. To want your bishop on, let's say, c4 or even e2, but not on g2. It's not terrible on g2, but it's just better on one of those slide squares here, b5, c4, one of these to play in the center on g2. It mainly bites on the e4 pawn. So this is why white now delays um, any commitment for this bishop. And now black plays bishop to d6. Yeah, which is a um, bit of a preparation move for taking and playing e5. Or in the game, as we see, um, he plays uh, e5 straight away without exchanging. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, this move is certainly okay. White d doesn't put any pressure on black, so it's uh, certainly okay, this move. Bishop e2, castles, castles. And a5. Yeah, a5 is designed to prevent any b4 ideas um, by white. It's a very, very typical move in, in this structure. Um, note that white is, um, yeah, 
playing something like a reversed Philly door. <laughs> it's like e5, d6, c6, and just this uh, setup here. So white is not exactly trying to play and serve and volley style, winning quickly, but rather get a longer, a longer kind of maneuvering battle, which is really typical for Carlson's style. He doesn't really want to get into a theoretical discussion, but wants to play chess with those guys. So rook e1, which is, um, of course, useful, clearing f1 for any kind of piece and maybe preparing e5. Black played e5 now himself. Yeah, and now it's interesting. The question is, um, yeah. what about this pawn formation in the center? Will black exchange here or will white exchange on d5, which is um, also interesting. In fact, Carlsen played this capture and changed the, the pawn formation. He went now to c4 with the knight. And now this knight puts some pressure on the center and um, can also at uh, one, one point or another capture on uh, d6, getting the bishop pair. Still, um, the bishop pair wouldn't be uh, so, um, yeah, so great for white as the bishops are not doing so much at the moment. But let's see what happens. Rook e8. And bishop to uh, to f1. Yeah, this is a typical maneuver here, securing the bishop on f1 and uh, allowing some uh, increased pressure on uh, the pawn on e5. Of course, white doesn't have any advantage, but this wasn't um, Carlson's idea. He just wants to play a, a longer game and don't want, uh, I don't know, some prepared line which uh, gets... Yeah, which somehow um, removes our life from the position, and he certainly managed this. There are all pieces. Uh, the, all pieces are on the board. It's not great for white, but you get uh, get a longer longer fight. Okay, bishop g4, h3. This is very normal. Bishop h5, and now g3. Yeah, this is designed to probably prepare bishop g2 at some point, simply because um, yeah, this pin is so so annoying. Cannot. Um, live in this pin all the time with the queen so we need to cover this um, knight and you don't want to return to g um, to e2 so um, after all white is preparing a fianchetto but black now played knight to b6 and then that changes things a bit i think white was thinking about as mentioned just um redeploying the bishop and uh, Playing, uh, playing um, on in this in this kind of position, but knight b6 is very concrete. Of course, black, yeah, threatens to take on c4, and um, so white uh, needs to react. And yeah, it's a simple reaction. He just took it on b6, and black recaptured. Yeah, and this is um, in fact an, an interesting decision by Caruana to allow this uh, pawn structure. I think he didn't really um, consider this kind of formation um a huge weakness but then in, in, uh, instead um counted on ideas like bishop c5 and this way uh, getting some pressure on the d pawn but um in fact it really weakens the queen side and uh, we will see in the the course of the game that um this has consequences black didn't um really need to play this uh, knight b6 he had other moves he could Oops, no, not not this. Uh, for example, he could have played something like this to prevent any uh, any queen um, sorties. Okay, it, it was not threatening at the moment because of the hanging knight. But I mean, a4 is also a pretty normal looking move in this position. Okay, but he he went as mentioned for this knight b6 thing, and here um it this surprised me a bit what Carlson played here. I must say. He played bishop g2, but I think this is designed to keep the fight going. Um, my initial reaction would be to play a4 here to... Oops, yeah, I'm a bit clicking. Nah, I want to get rid of this green square. How do I get rid of this? It's not working. <laughs> I wanted to click on this, yeah? Somehow it doesn't remove the green square. Maybe if I... If I... Um, Put it again. Yeah, this is better. Um, I would play a4 in order to fix this weakness, but black has this bishop c5 move. And um, 
also, this is not um, the, the end of the story, bishop c5, let's say white continues here, and then you've got this move, and uh, yeah, we are really weak on the d pawn. So a4 loses, um, yeah, a move in, in a way. And uh, how do you protect this now? Probably with this move. And then black can can simply return and ask you, how do you continue now? So maybe a4 is a bit too slow um, in the game. Carlsen played bishop g2 immediately to to get this knight uh, protected and um, allowed black to play b5. But as we see, this isn't such a big deal. On b5, he just played a4. And uh, yeah, what should black do now? He um, advanced. Alternatively, okay, you can think about capturing. But this is um, certainly also um, yeah, a, a bit a bit uncomfortable. Queen b5. I'm really clicking badly today. Queen b5 is uh, the problem now, which would irritate the the whole queen side. This is simply a weakness. This is all caused by this knight b6 move, which um, really um, puts some obligation on black to play to play uh, precisely on the queen side. As this is why I'm not so sure about this uh, maneuver. Okay, he played uh, b4. And Carlsen just played bishop e3. So um, all quite um, quite logical. And bishop to c7. Yeah, also very logical move. Getting some pressure on the d-pawn, probably preparing to um, play bishop b6, exchange uh, further material. And here Carlsen played queen to b3. Yeah, the idea is really, that it's really this... <laughs> this kind of uh, route to put pressure on the queen side and of course that's not all of it it's also setting a little trap but um, of course Caruana was on top of things black cannot take on d3 now because of uh, the simple move rook a d1 and where do you go now if you go to a6 there's even the funny move bishop f1 and you cannot really save the queen queen gets uh, gets trapped funny funnily with the in a funny fashion with his uh, two bishops, so cannot go here and uh, yeah, stuff like that simply loses a bishop. You have three pawns, but um, it's still a terrible position as white as everything um, on on good um, on good uh, squares. So yeah, maybe just to continue it a bit, let's let's say here, and you've got here and um, the strong diagonal. Uh, this is not. Uh, not playable at all for black. Um, it's um, pretty pretty lost, really. So it cannot you cannot take on d3, of course. But um, yeah, what should black play now? It's it's not easy at all. Caruana played h6, taking this um, square under control, which is understandable because knight g5 was was an idea and lots of variations variations. So it's um, understandable. And Carlsen now went um, queen to c4. In fact, instead of queen c4, he had a very interesting alternative with knight h4. This move is not so easy to understand at first, but it's um, it's quite strong. The idea is that um, yeah, white might go to f5 at some point, but uh, it's it's a kind of uh, it's the case. Of that the threat is stronger than the execution. If white would actually do this, it wouldn't do him so much good because of, um, yeah, let's say bishop to g6. But uh, one problem is also that black has problems um, moving his pieces because in some cases white just plays g4 and this bishop doesn't have any uh, any decent square. Let's say let's say queen d7 just for for argument's sake. Then g4 is a problem for black if you go back. You'll simply lose this bishop because of this uh, this pin on the diagonal. And of course, black can do th tricks like this, yeah, now attacking the knight. But just look at this kind of position. This simply looks good for white. You have weakened um, your your king position a bit, but you have really really active pieces now all in the center. So this knight h4 was interesting. I mean. Um, but Carlsen played a queen to c4, which um, is according to plan. He wants to get this into play, 
and uh, of course this protects uh, the pawn. Yeah, it's a good uh, multi-purpose move. Um, yeah, and now um, you will see a really a key um, a key point in this game. What Karana is doing now is um, initiating um, a fourth sequence, which leads into um, an end game. And um, it's really questionable um, if this was a good decision. Um, what uh, alternatives um, did he have? I mean, a decent move, um, I think, would be bishop to g6. It's also very obvious to um, to attack the pawn. And then you can think about uh, something like this. I don't know, just, just more or less keep the position. But white has d4, I just recognize this. Hmm. It's also not not nice at all. Yeah, I mean, I think really this knight b6 move, which uh, somewhat crippled uh, the queen side, was bad. It really was a bad decision. I mean, white is better in this position here. It's just a question of uh, how much better. Um, and um, not if, yeah. It's just a matter of is it a slight advantage, a big advantage, it's um, hard to tell. Maybe, maybe he can play this here. But right, look at this position. Yeah, just, just, just put it on the board. White has pressure. He's got the long, this diagonal, this kind of ideas, and it's simply a bad structure. Black cannot move any of these pawns, and uh, the queen is strong on b5. Yeah, it doesn't really, um, it doesn't really improve. Okay, what Caruana did, and I think this was planned beforehand. Um, is transposed into this end game that we that we get now. It's a long sequence. He took on c3, which only really makes sense in connection to the following, um, yeah, the following sequence, because otherwise this move uh, would would simply be terrible to open up the b pal b file. I mean, maybe this whole sequence is terrible, but it's uh, it's very difficult um, to assess in comparison to the middle game positions. I think he should have gone for more of a middle game position, but it's 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 difficult. Let's see what happens, just to show what I'm talking about. He played e4 now, um, and Carlsen just took it. I mean, he was certainly, uh, he, he certainly liked the, the end game that, uh, that is coming up. In fact, he had an interesting middle game alternative, but this is a bit of a computer move, and this is knight d4. And um, the point is that if black ends knight e5, which is uh, the, the immediate idea, you have queen b5, and this is um, quite good for, for white, but it's uh, it's really difficult to assess for a human, um, especially if you take into account that the alternative, what Carlson played, leads to a completely one-sided and pretty, um, yeah, yeah, pretty bad endgame for black. The idea of all this is uh, black cannot take here, because simply this bishop is uh, is hanging, and if he would take with the pawn, then there's f4, and you have a, a similar issue. But okay, you you don't win um, you don't win outright. This, uh, this, this is not not the case. Um, Black can can play uh, other stuff. He can take here, for example, and then white would um, probably um, capture. Followed by this, and um, white is um, somewhat better, I, I think, but it's not so clear if uh, this is better than what what was played in the game. Let's look what happened in the game. Carlson just took on e4, and now bishop takes f3. This was the whole idea. Bishop takes, bishop takes, and knight e5, forking the two pieces. Queen e2. You need to cover this uh, this bishop, of course. And now black took and played queen d3. This was the whole idea of um, of this sequence, attacking this uh, this pawn on uh, on e4 and getting it back. Yeah. Now Carlson played the simple but strong move king g2, asking black, uh, okay, how how would you would you like to get this pawn back? And he took uh, with the queen. Let's check quickly if he would take uh, with the rook. Um, yeah, then there's rook rook to, to d1 and probably rook to d7. And this is really annoying. F7 and the, the seventh rank. This rook is, is strong on the seventh. 
All right, so he cannot take with the rook here. Yeah. He he took in the game. He took took on e4 with the queen. Uh, I also note that you cannot uh, go here. Rook c1, and you you lose uh, the bishop. All right, he took on e4. This was the idea all along, and now White played the simple but very strong move, bishop to d4. Yeah, and Black has uh, no choice. He needs to to take on f3 and exchange queens. Um, of course, you need to check quickly what happens on queen e1. The problem is that in this position, it's simply a double attack and black loses the bishop. So you cannot cannot take on e1. And black has uh, basically no choice. He needs to exchange queens and king f3. Yeah, and this is the end game that I was talking about. Um, Caruana on move 19, yeah, so eight moves ago, basically, um, went for this endgame here in this position when he took on c3. This was the decision to go into the endgame. And, um, he certainly saw this, this position here and needed to assess this. And this is a very interesting position to, um, to assess. Um, yeah, not only for a human being, but also trying to, um, yeah, Look at this with with a computer with an engine. It's uh, pretty interesting to see that um, the engine. We can also um, should we put the next moves on the board? Yeah, let's 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 keep it this way. That the engine actually um, he, he the engine wants to play the same move that Caruana played b6. You cannot go without um, b6 in the long run. That the engine assess, assesses this position as. Um, if you let it um, calculate, um, engine, I mean Houdini, yeah, right, the top engine. It's um, it, it only gives white an advantage of zero point two, so a fifth of a pawn, and um, this is quite curious, really. And um, if you compare this to a human assessment, I mean, when when I looked at this position, I, I thought that white has. Um, a pretty clear advantage. I wasn't sure if it's enough to win the game, but it, it's it's pretty clear that white is white is better and also significantly better. And I was a bit surprised that the the two grandmaster commentators um, on ICC and this was um, Varush Nakobian of the US and Suad Atalik of Turkey, both uh, very strong GMs, like two two six hundred. So. Um, they both uh, thought that black is uh, very close to being lost already against uh, the kind of technique that uh, that Carlson is uh, is displaying and um, yeah this uh, I mean lost is, is really hard but it's it's very difficult for black um, yeah why is this end game so bad for black the, there there are, there are two factors so not even two uh, there are three factors even and this is why i'm also amazed that um the computer gives white only such a slight advantage um okay one point these pawns are fixed on dark squares and this is of course um a huge advantage for white who always has the pressure on the b6 pawn and black um just has this bad bishop to defend the pawn this is the first advantage um, the second advantage is, and this is um, somewhat connected to, to, to the pawn structure, is um, that white has a beautiful and secured bishop on uh, d4, which is optimal placed, really. It's a great, great position for the bishop, putting pressure on the king side and, of course, on the sensitive pawn on b6. And... Um, this bishop is uh, much worse in comparison. It just attacks nothing and um, is not easy to activate at all. And it doesn't have um, a secure uh, square at all. I mean, if, if this position, just theoretically, if white would have his bishop on d4 on b2, yeah, and this would be on c5, then this would be a, a completely different assessment. Yeah, it's a huge difference um, in, in peace activity. And uh, the third advantage that White has um, is obviously the king. He's on f3 already. And um, he has chances to invade all the way back to uh, um, up to c6. Yeah, And black is uh, on g8. 
and uh, it's not so easy to see how he would um, get his king into play quickly. So these are this um, these are three advantages in in this position. And um, usually, if you say um, uh, white has advantages, you can also talk about black's weaknesses. And very often, it is the formula is if um, if you've got one weakness, you can defend the position. If you've got two weaknesses, it's often uh, yeah impossible to defend defend the position. And three weaknesses is uh, yeah very often just too much. And this is three weaknesses. Yeah, it's an, it's an must, it's not only a static weakness like the pawn here, but also the weakness of the bishop, which is weaker than d4 and white's um, superior king position. So this is definitely critical for black. Um, and uh, I was surprised that the computer only gives this a 0 0.2, um, even after like two or three minutes calculation time. Um, yeah, there's still hope for mankind. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I think really a good technical player like Carlsen or Kramnik would beat the computer in this position very, very often. Um, all right, so let's see what happens. Um, it's still not uh, not an easy win or something, but you will. You, let's see. Let's see what happens. Carlsen plays rook ab1. Uh, by the way, you could ask yourself, what about this b6 move? Isn't, isn't this silly? As I just pointed out, this is a weakness. The problem is if white plays rook a b1, um, and he would, he would do that in the next move anyway, then there's no way to defend this pawn, so you need to play this anyway. So b6 is, is, you know, is okay. Rook a b1, rook c8. Yeah, black uh, relies on, on uh, some counterplay on c3, so if white would take now on b6, this is, uh, of course, um, this is of course nonsense because I had even blunders, uh, blunders a piece. Yeah, I'm silly. Even, even like this. But he wants to get some, some uh, play on, on the C pawn. This is um, one idea. So rook C8 and now rook E4. And this is a very strong <laughs> and very annoying move for black. It's not doing so much in itself. But um, it's um, it's a problem. What should black do? As long as this rook is on e4, there are ideas like rook g4, for example, attacking g7. And um, yeah, the rook on the e file, by playing rook e4, white actually allows this rook on b1 to, to move, probably to b5, just to be more flexible. He couldn't play rook b5 with rook on e1, obviously, as e1 is hanging. So he just increased the mobility of the b1 rook by playing rook e4. And the problem is, what should black do to um, to um, make any kind of progress here? And uh, with white's ideas like rook b5 hanging over over his head all, all the time. So um, it's difficult to keep the tension. He tried to. He played g6 sort of, um, yeah, removing this pawn from attack of the bishop. And now white played g4. A very interesting uh, aspect here of this endgame is, um, and it's very useful rule to to look at, if you have an endgame and you're trying to assess this endgame, one idea um, often is to check which side actually has got any kind of pawn breaks or ideas for adv advancing pawns to gain space. If you look at this position, you will see that black absolutely cannot move any of his pawns. It's simply not possible. If you would play h5, let's say black's to move, yeah? You would play h5, just for example. Then the end, then your problem is that, uh, okay, this is even rook g1, but let's say, um, take here h5 is simply a deadly weakness this is this this will get lost you can never play h5 basically in this position you play g5 you chronically weaken all your squares here and you put further pawns on the dark squares which you don't want against this bishop and f5 yeah f5 is just suicidal opening the position completely and um, black cannot move any of his pawns while White has got ideas. He can push g4, g5. He can push the f pawn later. We will, we will see soon, um, how white is able to make progress and black is, is not. So what did he play actually? 
He played Rook uh, King of Eight, and now H4. As I mentioned, White gains space, and White wants to play H5 because it um, it puts another pawn on a dark square, and possibly White can even put the bishop on E3, attacking H6 and B6 simultaneously. And uh, note that the bishop on C7, which is the counterpart, has no position on the board to defend both weaknesses. So black needs two pieces to defend two weaknesses, and uh, while white only needs one piece to attack those. So this in itself is a huge advantage. So hh5 is really a, a threat, yeah? an idea that um, white um, can use to put further pressure on black. He now faltered and took on e4. I think it's very difficult to keep this tension. And um, yeah, you probably need to take at some point. Um, I, I don't really see a, a good alternative. I mean, if you, let's say black passes here and doesn't do anything, rook b8, then this, then there's this h5 idea. And as mentioned, possible bishop uh, to e3. Uh, yeah, cannot get rid of this. So this, this kind of stuff, attacking the two weaknesses. And um, black simply is, um, is, is, is it's simply a problem. What what should black do to defend this? It's really an absolutely terrible kind of endgame where you're being tortured all the way. So um, I think it was really a bad decision to go into this endgame. But um, it's it's often very difficult from a, from a, psych a psychological um, point of view. Um, it's very difficult. Because Caruana certainly would love to play a draw in this game, and he he didn't really could stand the tension to to keep the position as it as it was. I mean, slightly worse, but probably not uh, not so terrible. And instead, he went for this end game, which he now needs to defend. And it's uh, yeah, it's uh, no fun at all. Certainly, okay. He took on e4. King takes. Rook e8 check. And um, king uh, king back to d3. If you if white would would advance, then um, black would play. A, it's very similar. White doesn't gain so much by by putting the king here. He had some some other idea. And um, let's see what what he played. He played to d3, rook to e6, and now bishop e3. The mentioned double attack. Black um, covered. And now rook b5. This is the idea that I was talking about. Activating the rook on the fifth rank. And this is why he didn't put the king on d5. He wanted to have the rook here. And this is also very nice. You can see now the point I was making earlier. That black cannot move any of his pawns. g5 loses a pawn. h5 loses a pawn. f5 loses a pawn. And f6 is, yeah, it's simply pointless. It doesn't do anything. It just puts another pawn on a dark square. While white can play f4, f5, h5. Theoretically, he could play g5, but this is, um, of course, a bad move. But this looks fun. Yeah, I should sell this kind of stuff sometimes. It uh, looks looks like modern art of it. Let's uh, get rid of this. So white has lots of ways to advance and increase the pressure, and black cannot move anything. So... Um, a really, a really great position for white. See what uh, what happens. Black played uh, bishop to uh, d8, h5, and it's really remarkable. If you give this position to Houdini, yeah, the best engine on the planet. On on and my my computer is not really um, it's not really a uh, weak. Yeah, it's a pretty pretty quick uh, quad uh, quad core Intel i7 whatever, and um, it's simply it's just it's 0 0.3, and this position is. It's just absolutely terrible for black. It's really remarkable. But the thing is, if you if you advance move by move, the evaluation goes down. The computer is simply not able to really um, assess the yeah the the magnitude of uh, black's problems. Okay, h5, rook d6, check. King c4, check again. Yeah, it wants on d5. Uh, black simply cannot do anything. He, you need to defend all the weaknesses. And now white um, even um, advanced the f pawn. Yeah, what should black do? Can just sit and wait. F5. 
Yeah, here's uh, here's an interesting point. He gave a check. Let's check what happened if uh, Black would take. You take on f5. Okay, I simply recapture, of course. And um, yeah, now you can can look at two moves. If Black would try to um, yeah get some kind of activity with the rook, then just King c6 is winning the game. Bishop d8, Bishop to b6, and you you simply win both pawns. Yeah, it's um it's a pretty easy win, of course. Also the king on c6 against the king on f8, so all white's pieces um, join the attack here. Simply, um, simply terrible. So you cannot um, play an active move as white in waits, so you need to um, give the check here. And um, after this, it's it's very difficult to to find uh, find any kind of move. Well, where do you go? You need to defend b6. Yeah, probably something like this. And now White um, will look at um, further ways to improve his position. There are there are ways you can, um, for example, think about um, just for instance something like this, going to h7 even rook here. So increasing pressure on the king side. I mean, there are a multitude of ways to increase this. Um, also, the c pawn advance can can play a role. Of course, this uh, needs to be considered carefully. If you advance the c pawn, you would exchange weakness. But sometimes it's necessary to exchange weaknesses of the opponent if you create some direct opportunities. So, for instance, in waiting on the queen side and winning in the a pawn at the end would justify to play c4 c5. So black is um, simply um, still in in big trouble here. Um, I think um, the invasion here on the king side is one one problem. Also, I mean, so even even as an idea, let's say I need to get rid of the the arrows. I give you a simple line, rook g one, and I say, let's say black does nothing, yeah, just just doing nothing. What is what is the idea, rook h seven? Maybe even Bishop G7 and uh, and getting the pawn, yeah. Black is is close to being uh, paralyzed. So after F5, he at the end he he gave this check, and um, and simply yeah uh, he 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 kept the position. He didn't take on on F5 or H5. Rook B1. So the rook uh, is redeployed on the king side, King E8, and now Magnus checks changed on G6 and played. Rook to h1, and now we get to the point where the engine is really seeing that um, black is in trouble. It wasn't too pessimistic before, funny enough. Um, yeah, simply h6 is hanging. What is uh, what is black supposed to do? He played king uh, f7, and relying on a little trick, if it would take, he would actually use the game as this is this is a check, yeah. So cannot take immediately on 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 h6, but uh, you don't need to. You have other other good good moves, and in fact, just king d5 was played, rook to d6 check and king c4. Yeah, and now um, it's pretty much out of moves for um, for black. H6 is uh, now really hanging, and um, what should you do? He played. Um, I think he took. Yeah, he took. Yeah. Um, a g5 is the alternative that the computer is giving. Still initially with a quite decent evaluation, but after a little bit of time, it recognizes that uh, just rook e1 um, wins for white even. It's uh, impossible here for black to prevent king to b5 and rook e6 just brutally exchanging the rooks, and then white wins uh, all black spawns, b6, a5, and probably even bishop f8 at some point might win h6, so it's simply dead, yeah, like something like this. And this is, is just over. Yeah, yeah, I could just take. Ah, this it's h5. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You cannot take. You need to need to be a little bit more cautious. Sorry. Yeah, and um, this idea is also in there. What what I overlooked um, here by my taking, you need to be be cautious. Is h5 here, yeah. and it's it's check here, check on on g1. So a little trick. 
So white needs to play a move like this and uh, win a tempo in this way. And black simply um, has no defense here against winning those those pawns. If you do this now, you really can simply take as this bishop is is controlling the the diagonal here and the the, the square on g1. So g5 also loses to to rook e1. So he took on on um, f5. White recaptures, and this is now really a, a, a clear cut win. While you could argue that um, there's some defense here and there or some improvement, this is just really winning now. Black played uh, bishop to d8 and now f6, and this is the the key point, which wins the game. H6 is hanging now, and um, Black is uh, simply unable to to uh, defend this pawn. If you go here, then there's rook uh, to g1. Black cannot advance simply due to f7, and this pawn will will promote after something like this. So he, he actually needs to go back, and then there's rook g7, so winning completely. Um, yeah, and this is why black took on f6, and now rook to h6. Yeah, and this is um, the win now, because uh, you simply threaten on f6, to take with the winning king and pawn endgame, so I need to move the bishop, and this actually wins both pawns. And white has the bishop endgame with two pawns, and he won those weak pawns on b6 and a5. Very, yeah, very much in accord according to the theme of the game, where these pawns uh, were weaknesses. Yeah, note that um, this is uh, the wrong. Um, the wrong uh, corner yeah, for the bishop. So without the c pawn, actually, this would be a draw. But um, with the c pawn, it's a simple win. White can simply push the pawns. It's technically really easy. Just uh, advance the pawns to maximum activity. And now you use your own king. It's very easy. And uh, yeah, this is uh, the last line of defense. Black needs to uh, keep the bishop here. And uh, yeah, you cannot play c7. Yeah, as Black simply takes, and you have uh, here you have uh, the, the notorious stalemate with the draw. Not really fair, yeah, and chess that this is a draw, but uh, it's it is, it's simply the rules. <laughs> um, so you cannot play c7, but Carlson just played this move, and um, yeah, Caruana resigned because uh, this this diagonal is simply too um, too short. For black, white will play bishop d8 next move. So let's say here, bishop d8, and next move you push through your pawn, or after the exchange you will promote your pawn. So I really like this game. A great um, technical display by Carlsen. It wasn't um, um, so difficult, really, I guess, for him. Um, he just uh, plays those stuff very... Uh, yeah, it's it's very natural to him to play this uh, this great in a great fashion. Also, note the clock times. Yeah, he was playing this rather quickly. He got fifty six uh, minutes left at the end, while Caruana only was down to six minutes. I'm not completely sure about the time control, but it's clear that Carlson was able to play this technical part of the game rather quickly. And for me, the really the key position in this game was. Um, yeah, two, yeah. Knight b6, I think. I don't know. I think this is simply a bit dubious to weaken your pawn structure, but, um, the real key, um, was here in this position where Caruana decided to, to take on, on c3. Yeah, this b takes c3 move and, uh, which initiated this, um, why isn't this working? Which initiated this kind of, uh, Simplification and transfer, uh, transformation into this uh, really bad end game, and he really should have uh, kept the tension probably and uh, and keep um yeah keep playing with the full board. White is uh, I think slightly better anyway, but it uh, simply not the kind of one way one way battle that um, he had to uh, had to fight in the game against this. Um, yeah, against this a better bishop on d4, yeah. This kind of position as as mentioned with the simply with the three advantages that white has with the better bishop, 
better pawn structure because of b6 and the better king. Yeah, a really nice game. I think uh, very wor very worth. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's um, it's very useful to to look at this kind of end game because you um, you don't uh, really must trust your computer all the time. Let's let's say um, you um, you 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 reach just theoretically would reach uh, this kind of position um, in while you prepare for some game, and uh, the computer would tell you. 0 0.2, yeah, just very slight advantage for white. It's um, basically a draw, right? And um, this is simply not the case. This position is just terrible for black. Especially in a practical game, maybe the computer would defend somewhat better, but it's simply it's simply not equal. And uh, even not 0 0.2, that's simply a pretty big advantage for white. So computers are not um, not perfect. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the game. I really did. Yeah, I like this kind of technical displays. Um, very, very nicely done. Thanks for watching.